it's time to talk about the toilets. We get a lot of questions about why we use our toilet system versus using the old bucket and lid or another system. So today we're going to answer some of those questions. First, I'd like to thank Garrett for prompting me to make this video. If it hadn't been for his interest in his questions and how our toilet is made, I probably would have never gotten around to this. So thanks, Garrett. Appreciate that. So let's get into the pros and cons of other toilets. First, we're going to talk about the five gallon bucket. First theme about the five gallon bucket is it's tippy. You sit on it, you lean to one side, you lean to the other side, you lean forward, you lean backwards, it's going to tip. And the reason being is the base of the toilet is the same size as the lid of the toilet. Without any kind of flare or anything like that on the bottom of the toilet, of course, it's not going to be as stable. All right, you're sitting on the toilet, you're sitting in the middle, that's fine and dandy. Of course, we all know that what you do in this area doesn't require just sitting at all times. So if you lean, see what it does? It does not make for a sturdy structure. The second is the round opening and the small seat. It's not the most comfortable thing to sit on. The other thing we did not like about it when we tried it was the need to secure it while you're traveling. Um, obviously, you turn a corner, this is going to fall over, it's going to roll across your floor, it's, you know, this is not a sealed system, so therefore, if it does tip over, if it does roll, you have a mess. If you're camping for a week or two in the same spot, that's not a problem, having to secure the toilet or empty the toilet and secure it before you leave. If you're on the move like we are when we're in our van, moving from one campsite to the next it, within a day or two days, it kind of gets to be a pain in the butt. Now let's talk about cassette toilets. The reason cassette toilets didn't appeal to us was because of the splashback factor. And if you have a cassette toilet, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, they're good for being able to take and take into a bathroom and to dump the cassette toilet out, the holding tank out, and dispose of the waste in a proper way that it can be processed properly. But it's not as discreet a process as everybody would lead you to believe. Um, you're carrying a couple of days worth of waste in there, it's solids and it's liquids mixed. Um, there is quite the odor involved with that. And of course, there's always the mess of the splashback, like I said. Call me a prima donna if you want. I am kind of a germaphobe. Um, I don't like doing anything that's what I would borderline on nasty, and that's kind of a nasty process. The other reason was we were in the SUV. We did not have a place to store something as large as a cassette toilet. Unless we strapped it to the cargo rack on the back of our SUV, which would probably kind of make us look like the clampets going down the highway. The last thing is the cost factor. At the time we were looking for the toilets, um, cassette toilets were $300 and up. Composting toilets were at over $500. Um, that just wasn't feasible for people that are not living full time in their vehicle. And of course, the last option we had available to us was the absolute cheapest option available to man or beast, and that is the cat hole. Let's get realistic. If you're van camping in the city, you're not digging a cat hole. If you're camping in a semi-developed campground that doesn't have toilets but has designated camping spots, and there's other people around, you're also not digging a cat hole. It, that's, it's just, that's not happening. The other thing you need to think about is the long-term ramifications of doing that. The average statistical information that I've found recently is for the year 2021, over 52 million people went camping, either in an RV or in a tent or van. Not 
is a huge impact on our national forest, our national parks. Not everybody treats these areas with the respect they deserve. And so that brings up some obvious safety concerns and health issues when it comes to the disposal of human waste. We've personally seen evidence of RVers dumping their black tanks in the forest and in the desert. We've seen it, we've smelt it, and caravans even building community toilets in the woods and then when the caravan moves on they just leave the mess behind. Look on YouTube there's several videos from other YouTubers that are showing evidence of this happening. I'm not going to go on a rant about it because this is not what this video is about. There will always be lazy people or unconcerned people that are just going to do their business and leave it behind and most of the time they justify it by saying, well the animals do it. I wish those people would take the time to stop and think about what they just said. Now there are some grave concerns about these practices. Um, this is how human waste gets into our water systems. This is how diseases like cholera spread. And when you're talking about 52 million counted people, this, this isn't the uncounted masses of van campers. This is, you know, boondocking and BLMing. These are 52 million camping people. We're talking about a lot of people and a lot of human waste. Even the National Park Service has started issuing guidance on this particular topic. Um, what to do with your human waste while in the national parks, while camping and just while hiking. Um, so if it's beginning to become an issue with the National Park Service, it's a legitimate gripe. It's, it's a legitimate issue that a lot of campers have. On to the next topic. <laughs> and what it really came down to for us, what the deciding, deciding factor was for us, was space. At the time we were traveling in our SUV, if you followed our channel for a little while or gone back to some of our earlier <laughs> attempts at making videos. We were in our SUV. We didn't have room for a cassette toilet. We didn't or anything like that. And so the toilet that we purchased, the one that we use, is actually foldable. And we were able to fold that up, store it behind the seat in the floorboard, um, in front of the mattress, and that's how it worked for us. We were able to use it in our tent if we set up the tent, if we were going to be there for several days, or set it up in the woods. So the next question we get asked is, how did our toilet end up in this box? <laughs> Before we made this box, we took a 31 day trip out, went through Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and what we had with us was, was just the toilet. It was just the, the trifold. It was just this. You know the old saying, live in your van before you start your build <laughs> and you will discover what you need and what you don't need. Um, we're still going through that process. We haven't perfected it. As you see, I have made some changes to the van here recently and there will be a video coming up on that about the boxes that I built that we talked about in our long van review. But anyways, these are the things we discovered while we were traveling. We had to secure the toilet to the leg of the bed while we were traveling. Um, we couldn't leave it set up, obviously, because we have our storage underneath the bed and we need to be able to get our tubs in and out. Plus, when you're moving around here in the dark, um, that makes things difficult when there are things you have to walk around. We have minimal floor space because we're in an E350 low top. Height of the van is always a problem. The amount of floor space we have is always a problem because there are two of us in here. Space is very limited in here. We would actually put the toilet over in the corner when we needed it, but then when we traveled, we would have to strap it down. That, if you're, in, like I said earlier, if you're in one place and you're staying there for several days, it's not a problem, but when you're moving one day to the next day to the next day like we are, it really gets to be a pain. It really does get to be a pain. Um, little things like that are the reason that people quit van life because you gotta simplify your process. You've got to make things as easy as possible. Otherwise, the day-to-day -day minutia of moving this and moving that and storing this and storing that really does wear down on you. Even just traveling for a month at a time like we do. The second concern we had was breakthrough leaking with the bags because your bag's just suspended underneath here. For that reason, we decided to add a bucket underneath ours that the bag goes down into. And once again, same issue as before, while you're traveling, even with the toilet tied down, this bucket has the ability to kind of move around and slosh around. Never did have a problem with it falling over, but there was the potential that it 
could fall over if the bucket tip. Now I've been told you don't have to worry about your bags leaking. If you get good toilet bags, they're not going to leak. And 99.9% .9 of the time, that is 100% true. The bag is not going to leak. However, that doesn't mean something's not going to chew a hole in it. Because have you ever, and we've had wasp in our van, but have you ever seen a wasp chew a hole through something in like 10 seconds? I mean, those things are like creatures from the movie Alien. They've got some acid in their saliva or something because those things are, they're not right. So for those reasons, worrying about it tipping, um, worrying about bugs chewing through the bag or rodents. Fortunately, we've never had rodents in our van knock on some wood, but um, we found ourselves changing the bag out every day. Every time we moved, we take the bag out, we change the bag out, we put a clean bag in when we needed it. And that created a lot of waste that was unnecessary. You know, when you're talking about plastic waste, you know, one of the bags is biodegradable, the other bag is not. Not to mention the cost, because at the time we were using the expensive bags. The second reason that it ended up in the box was privacy. You'd look in the screen doors and you'd see the toilet. There was no concealing it, not in the up position, not, not while it was set up. I mean, yes, we could fold it up, stick it in the back of the van, but a folded up toilet that's in the back of your van does you zero, and I mean zero good in an emergency. <laughs> you know, eventually it became kind of a running joke with us, and especially on that 31 day trip of how many ways can we use the toilet because it was just sitting there all the time i mean it it got used as a footstool it got used as an office chair it got, it, just, it it became a running joke with us and to be honest with you when you're two people living in such a cramped space you got to really make light of these situations you got to find the joke in everything and uh, anyways we'll i'll roll you a couple of clips right here of some of the interesting things we did with our toilet on that trip Let's see what Kent's doing. Hey, baby, what you doing? Editing. Nice workstation. Make do with what you got. Make do? Kent has improved her office space and comfort. She's busy at work editing more photos and videos. and has a new footstool. <laughs> Thirdly, is that a word? Thirdly? Thirdly, I'm going with it. I don't trust plastic. You know, this thing's made out of plastic. The legs are plastic. I've had back surgery. Before I had my back surgery, I was remanded to a wheelchair. I could not walk. The thought of one of these legs cracking or the hinge on the leg, letting go, anything like that happening, and this toilet coming down while I'm sitting on it, really kind of just scared the heck out of me. I have to be very careful with my back. These toilets are rated for 330 pounds. I'm overweight, but I'm nowhere near that. It just made me nervous. And, you know, you see these horror stories of people sitting on exercise balls and the ball blowing up and, and they come down on their coccyx. And for that reason, I built the box. And in the box, you'll notice, let me get you a look here. There are supports on each side. And when the toilet sits down in there, the rim of the toilet right here actually sits on that ledge. It does take a little bit of the weight off and does kind of distribute it more evenly across the toilet. And for that reason, this thing is rock solid. I mean, when you sit on it, it, it seriously is like sitting on your house toilet. And that gives me a lot of comfort, um, knowing that that's a concern I don't have to have anymore. I don't have to worry about, you know, it tipping and me falling over to the side. I don't have to worry about a uh, leg cracking or breaking and coming out from underneath me and the whole toilet and me going down. Now it's obvious I'm no carpenter and, and, and we discussed that in the next video I do about the van where I show you some of the changes that I've made in the van. If I can build this box, I mean seriously, anybody can do this. It is just some simple plywood 
some simple one by twos. The leather I got at the local hobby store, wrapped it, stapled it on, got these studs to just dress it up a little bit and make it nice. There are a couple of perks and one of them, one of them is the additional seating. I mean, we were able to uh, use this as a stool. And if you stay tuned in an upcoming video, I'm actually going to use this stool to make another modification to the van that's really gonna improve our quality of life or quality of camping life, I guess you could say. Now, I'm gonna show you how it goes together. Um, I think I've demonstrated this before. I'm not 100% sure, but for people that want to go back through the 100 old videos that we have, um, I'll go ahead and show you how we put it together. You know, basically our bucket goes in there. Toilet seats down in there. We put in one of our bag systems, which if you're watching this video, it's probably because you found our channel when I showed you how to make these bags. And that's it, you're ready to go. You know, you got your storage here. The last and final added perk, and you can make fun of my husband for this one. He said, not only is it a stool, but it's also a crap table. He did mean the pun, and I'm so sorry to all of you, but that's just the way he is. He's a funny guy. <laughs> Anyway, so that's it. That's our system. That's how we built it. That's why we built it. That's why we chose it. We're always open to suggestions. So if you have any ideas about how we can improve it, please let us know. I do know the one thing I probably would have done is built the sides of the boxes up a little bit higher and put maybe a hinged lid on there instead of a liftoff lid. We actually, when we take the lid off of it at night, we set the lid down on the floor and it actually kind of gives you a nice comfy little place to sit Indian style. So is that appropriate to say Indian style? Meditation style. Yeah, there we go. If you have any comments, please leave them below. Um, we hope you stick around or come back. I've got some upcoming videos that are van build videos that just aren't travel videos. One on these boxes here on the side of the van and um, another one about the modification I'm going to be doing to use this for one more tool in the van basically. You know everything in your van is a tool. We hope you come back. We'll be seeing you real soon.